Well, let's discuss uh, the latest now. And joining us is Director in the Middle East and North Africa programme at the think tank, the European Council on Foreign Relations. That's Julian barnes Dacey, and our own international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert, is with me here in the studio as well. Julian, I'd like to start with you. It's early days. It does appear, though, that there may not be now an immediate response anyway to this attack from Israel, uh, partly after those warnings, uh, presumably, from Joe Biden that the US would not take part, all that international pressure as well to try to decrease tensions? Absolutely, yes. I think kind of the, the immediate sense that seems to be that there won't be a, a response in, in the coming hours or days. I think there was some discussion in the Israeli war cabinet about a response as the attacks were actually happening. Uh, but that were, there was pushback within the cabinet, given the kind of multiple fronts where Israel is now engaged. And as you say, there is a lot of international pressure on Israel right now not to retaliate as President Biden put it, to, to take the win of effectively these failed Iranian strikes and to not get uh, drawn into a wider cycle of escalation that would really risk a more dangerous development because Iran would see direct strikes on the country in a far more existential way than it did, for instance, the Israeli strikes on its embassy in Syria. We're just hearing, actually, from uh, Iran, this coming out of Tehran, uh, urging Western nations to appreciate its restraint, as the Iranians are putting it, towards Israel. I mean, that does prove um, what we've been talking about here on the programme over the last hour or so, in fact, that Iran did deliberately uh, not target main cities and, and, to a certain extent, tried to, well, to a large extent, tried to avoid any mass casualties, at least. I mean, I think the bottom line here is that Iran is desperate not to get sucked into a direct war with, the, with, the, with Israel and the U.S. Uh, since October 7th, they've made notable um, efforts in that direction, even if their proxies have, have continued to attack Israel. On this attack, it was very well telegraphed in advance. They communicated what they were going to do uh, to multiple stakeholders, it seems. The attacks didn't succeed in any way, and I think that's in large part because of the fact that they were quite open and transparent in what they were about to do. Plus, of course, they didn't have the capacity, the capability to get past uh, Israeli defense uh, systems, and they probably knew that that would be the case from the outset. So the Iranians are working hard, in a sense, to project the sense that actually they are responding, that they're not weak, that they can maintain their deterrence uh, capabilities. But at the same time, they're treading carefully to not get sucked into a conflict which would hit them hard and which, as they would see it, would distract attention away from the Gaza conflict, which they think is weakening Israel in and of itself. 